Hello, everybody. You, I believe we're live. You might um, be able to um, hear our voices with any luck. Um, we know that some folks were uh, asking for links, so we're, we're going through everyone as much as we can. In fact, I'm going to put my laptop up to make sure I can uh, check things coming in. So welcome to those who are with us who are with us at the moment. You may be um, wondering to yourself why Jody looks like this. <laughs> um, but my name is Peter Bonnell. I'm a format festival director. Uh, and my other job or jobs at Quad, uh, where format is based, is the program manager, or in essence, the artistic director. And one of my amazing team members is Jenna Eady, sitting just here, which Hello. is a um, format coordinator. Um, that's with us for the next year, hopefully longer after that, but is also stepping in very ably for the equally amazing and able uh, Neve Tracy Wynn, who's on maternity leave at the moment. So, yes, so today Jody couldn't join us, unfortunately, because she's uh, unwell, um, but she really wishes she could be here. Uh, so today we're, we're going to really try and answer um, as many questions as we we can that people might have in terms of applying for the Format 25 uh, Open Call. So actually, this is the first time I've done a session like this, funnily enough. Actually, I've done many uh, mentoring sessions for artists and uh, talks online and so forth uh, over many years, over the last 20 years or so. Um, so um, we'll just sort of meander and freewheel our way um through this session today and please picture your questions as soon as you have them so it might be best to put in the chat first of all yeah and then if anybody has um wants to come on the video and like ask direct questions that way they're also open to that and um, while we're just admitting people if people want to put their questions in the chat that would probably be a good start um and then yeah because we're about half for the minute yeah, so we're just waiting for people to, to come in um, as I'm speaking. As you can tell, I'm, it's kind of like that. Some of you may have seen that, some of you may not. A guy who wandered into the newsroom at the BBC for a job interview, then they put him live on air and he had to waffle and meander and uh, talk about nothing in general for about um, half an hour, thinking he was being interviewed. He's actually being uh, interviewed live on BBC TV at the time, so I feel sort of in the same way. But anyway, <laughs> um, we'll try and, and keep it um, as focused as we can. Are we just we do still have, waiting? Well, we've got a few to admit still. This is recorded, by the way, so it will be uploaded later. Um, there will be a link sent around for people to watch it. I don't know what it's going to be on yet. It might be on YouTube or yeah, maybe YouTube, that'd be best. Yeah. Um, but we're still waiting on a few, unless anybody's got anything pressing right now they want to start us off. Maybe. Got one in there already. Or... Um, nothing in the chat. Yeah. Ah, everybody's been a little shy. So anyway, let me give you <laughs> a little bit of overview of uh, format coming up so I'm um, I presume and we presume that many of you know format may well have attended a format festival here in Derby over the last few years I've been a curator and part of the format team for 12 and a half years now um I uh, as I said I would curate and manage a number of exhibitions working with the founder director Louise Fedotov Clements and then I took over the role as the director in um, well, mid-2022. So I uh, worked with the team on the 2023 iteration of the festival, and we were coming out of a, in essence, a um, the, the pandemic, post-pandemic sort of situation at the time. And the theme we had then was what photography can be. We wanted it to be relatively general. We wanted it to be wide-ranging um, and something that could really appeal to as, as many sort of lens-based image artists, photographers, filmmakers, um, collectives, curators as possible. But when it came to this year, we we thought, and I thought as the director, that we wanted to maybe have a more of a of a concise theme as happened in the past um, with themes such as factory and habitat that sort of reflected 
an essence of either the environment in which quad, uh, sorry, in which format found itself, and formats based at quad, this large purpose-built building in the uh, the middle of Derby. But Derby is quite well known as a uh, as a, a town of great industry over many centuries. So the theme of factory reflected both international but also local concerns, habitat, the the world in which we sort of find ourselves today, for example, um, and were and how we we manage that world. So when it came to this iteration in, in 2025 and the open call, I am originally had a title of emergency because I felt that particularly with the, the political uh, situation in the UK at the time, uh, but around the world in the rise of populism, the continuing conflicts that were springing up in Ukraine um, and, and the Middle East as well, unfortunately, um, but then the the effects of even Brexit in the UK, or climate change deniers, or the way in which we seem not all of us, and I'm certain that everyone here isn't uh, within this camp, but the way in which we may well find ourselves in adversarial situations across many different aspects of modern living, and sim simply where people just find they can't agree, they can't agree in anything, so hence they are conflicted or in conflict or have conflicting ideas or conflicting ways in which people should live their lives or the conflicting ways in which the world should be managed the world should be saved and so on and so on so although it may well be a very sort of specific and focused theme we hoped it would be something that would appeal to many um, practitioners both in the UK and uh, around the world um, so they, we, of course, then we put out the open call um, and we are uh, eagerly awaiting submissions and we've already had quite a number so far. Uh, so today is really just an opportunity for us to try and give some feedback, um, give some sort of tips and ideas on how to put your proposal together and so on. But in terms of the theme, is there anyone who's joined us now has any reflections on the theme or any questions in terms of how you might respond to that theme and we're just taking <laughs> text questions aren't we so we're taking text questions but um, if anybody hopefully would like to put the camera on and ask us a question um and we can just float some ideas and answer any queries that you have at all uh has anyone got a response to the theme i mean just good all good <laughs> everyone's everyone's calm well, in terms, I mean, I remember um, I, I worked at another gallery many moons ago before I came to Quad and Format, and we used to have an annual open exhibition. Um, it was themed at the time, and the theme that we came up with, myself and the director, this is early, around about 2005, so quite a few years ago, and we came up with an idea, a theme called Common Ground, and sometimes we found that artists would almost take existing work and sort of shoehorn a narrative or a theme into that theme. But I I, I think one thing I, I really should have said from Format 23, what photography can be, which was the theme then, that we found that so many artists were and photographers and lens-based media artists, filmmakers, were, were producing work that was really, I mean, this is what photographers do. It's what what you all do. It's what you do so incredibly well you you go out and you document that um that world about us it to such great effect um we've got a question coming in is it so two? We've got okay. two first one's from jeremy it says how flexible are you going to be on our interpretation of the theme i mean I, that's a really good question that's um Jer jeremy is it jeremy, jeremy yeah. and that's something i was sort of getting to right now i think you can probably apply many different aspects of, of your practice, I guess, to to that that theme. Um, so we are we are very flexible. We are we are we're not looking for artists to look and go, well, it's not quite hitting all the elements of that theme. Um, and we will we will look to accept other things and, and take them all under due due consideration. And I feel that albeit perhaps relatively specific, it is something that's quite broad and, and wide range and hopefully as I sort of explained in my opening comments. So I'm not sure how constructive that feedback is, Jeremy, but that might 
give you some reassurance that all work no matter what. And we'd like it to have, you know, a form of, 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 of connection to the theme, you know, um, even if it's sort of directly opposite the theme, why not? That's a really useful thing for us to see. Hopefully you'll feel sort of confident to, to apply uh, based on that. And please do do send some follow up questions if anyone has asked something wants to wants to know. Uh, Faz says, "Can I just ask? Uh, I'm doing some pieces which are joint photo and paintings. Uh, the work of triptychs. Would this be okay, or does it have to be purely photography?" Um, do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, mixed media is absolutely fine. I I don't see any issue with that um because we were welcoming um submissions from uh lens-based media but also collectives um we do uh having just interviewed um one of the previous bursary winners uh her project was curating um photo books and things like that so it doesn't have to be purely just still photographs or images it can be mixed media <coughs> And it's very interesting, again, uh, it, it, to hear that. Is it Baz? Faz. Faz, uh, beg, beg your pardon, Faz. I, I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see the screen. Um, I recently, well, re when I say recently, I think it was pre-pandemic, I worked with um, a, actually a fine art tutor at the University of Derby. And I should say University of Derby is one of our, our key partners, key funders for format. And he proposed a conference about, digital and painting and photography, um, actually photography and painting, and I shoehorned in the digital element. And I was really intrigued by that juxtaposition of the, the painterly image, of course, and, and photography. And I think it really retouching the history of photography, archive photographs, it, it, you know, it, it fits in really well. So yeah, I, I echo what uh, Jenna said and would say, uh, yeah, all, all submissions such as that are welcome um so that's two really good questions has anybody else got any questions or comments on anything said so far feel free to put your cameras on we can have a conversation so um i'm presuming that many of you ah oh hello hello yeah, so I put my camera on and ask a question if that's okay. Yes, yes. yeah, hello. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Um, yes, you mentioned talking, um, putting a proposal in. Do you have any guidance on what the proposal should contain or what you need to see in a proposal? Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, what we'll be doing from this open call, as you, uh, you likely know, we we'll be selecting five, maybe six, if we feel we can accommodate that, um, proposals or artists uh, or curators uh, or collectors for the festival. Um, and then what we plan to do is either here at Quad, which is a purpose-built gallery space, or as is usually the case with format. Um, for example, hopefully the um, Museum of Making um, at, the, at um, the Museum of Derby, Derby Museum, um, and we've got and some other what we call meanwhile spaces or spaces we use. There are um, old shop spaces that we use for format exhibitions in the past. So we're looking to to exhibit that work in these spaces and to give each artist that we select the fee of of a thousand pounds plus an exhibition budget. Um, and I should have memorized this. I think it's about three k, maybe more, roughly that amount, as well as travel costs um, on top. Um, and with that 3K, we'll also be providing tech support and AV support and, and the artist becomes part of the catalogue, the guide and so on and so on. So there is a budget to install an exhibition, to realise an exhibition. And generally, depending where you're based, we don't always um, ship work because it can actually be more expensive than fabricating it here in the UK. And this is primarily for those who are uh, based internationally who are listening to this today. Um, and then we, what we would do once we select the artist is work um, together as a curatorial team, Jen and myself and Jody and other members of the, the team that I lead to realise that exhibition with the artist and make it as 
as sort of expansive and as detailed and as as brilliant as possible. So you might, Jamie, you might want to look again because I I'm the director of this festival and I uh, worked with Neve and, and my team to write all the details, but I forget the exact sort of uh, budgets we we've, we've aligned. Um, for each project, yeah, but it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't so much on budget on, but what would you would like to see from us at this stage? What do you want from a proposal? This is what I was going to get to because what you might want to think about is what might be feasible within those costs. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. For example, if you want to have a gold plated toilet that yeah. costs fifty grand, then we're not going to be able to do that. So think about that. It's 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 quite an abstract thing to think about because. A print, a, you know, self adhesive vinyl print, a large print we could apply to the wall can be quite, you know, uh, impressive, quite large with frameworks on top. And that might cost a thousand pounds or 500 pounds or, or, or something around that amount. So we, you, we'd like artists to think about that. We haven't got a square footage of space at the moment, but it will be a significant sort of wall space or square footage area for each exhibition as as long as we can secure a large enough space, which I'm confident we will. There's quite a number of them around Derby. So in terms of that proposal, though, in terms of the nitty gritty, it's I'd like everyone to to be as as sort of ambitious as they 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 want to be, but think within those parameters of the, the budget that might be available. Um, and as I say, this 3K just to produce, um, there's a fee separate to that, there's travel separate to that, then there's technician support and AV support separate to that as well. Um, so it could involve projectors, screen-based work, screens, um, printed photographic works, of course, in a variety of different sort of, um, um, sort of uh, media and styles. Um, and, you know, we... It's we maybe we we can't necessarily give a square footage space out because when we put the open call out, we're still quite a way off from the festival, and we usually secure spaces a little further in the future. But what I would say is is be ambitious, as ambitious as sort of you want to be. And what we we'll do is then speak with each artist to make that exhibition happen. And if it means it needs to be curated, of course, and sort of. And I use this term very broadly, edited down to sort of ensure it, it works well in a space. We'll, we'll certainly do that too. So, you know, you, you think about, of course, the way in which you you normally produce work, you you show work framed, self these vinyl, screen-based or sculptural objects, installation, digital, you know, sort of any media that primarily is lens-based focus, but we, we, we've already spoken about a painterly aspect and, you know, bringing photography together with painting. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of, I think that's that's mostly what I can say at the moment, Jeremy. Does that make sense? Is there anything else you want uh, me to elaborate on? Yeah, I just had a really interesting review with Seba Chowdhury in Arles yeah. a few weeks ago, and she was looking at my work and saying, I'd really like to see how you think this should be shown in an exhibition. It's, you know, mm -hmm. she said, I'll stick it up on the wall and photograph it, show me what it would look like in a, an exhibition. Are you wanting people to go that far or? Um, it's funny, Seb was a former uh, format coordinator yes. uh, for, for many years. And she makes an excellent point. That that's something that whenever I do portfolio reviews or mentoring with artists, um, I, I would say to them, have you got any in, in any existing install shots? That's helpful. Or as Seb has said, that's a really good point. Find a space. I mean, we're relatively fortunate. We're in a, it's a bit cluttered, but we're in a, a white-walled room at the moment. But find somewhere that is relatively uncluttered or, a, you know, it doesn't have to be a perfect painted space, but place works in earth. There's another thing that may or may not be helpful to those listening today, but as a curator, and I was the senior curator at Quad for 10 years of format, what I, I use is a software package, and I've never been trained on it. I've just had to learn it. It's called SketchUp. And you can get a free version of it. So if you type in sketch up or one word, you have to create an account with this. It's a company called Trimble. And somewhere on there, there is a for personal use. Um, and then you can use that to create this CAD. It's like a CAD package. You know, you can create a virtual sort of space. And I use that because I've got a model of 
the main quad gallery, or for example, I'll go to the spaces we use, you know, meanwhile spaces for format, measure it up, and I'll create a model to imagine what an exhibition might look like in that. So it's free. You can create spaces to your heart's content. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it's relatively intuitive once you start uh, using it. And you can create spaces to scale and you can kind of color walls. You can bring in objects from the 3D warehouse. You can also import your images relatively to scale. You can put figures into that space. And I use that. I use that to curate spaces. I use it to price up the, the cost of, of installation for spaces as well. So I would suggest if, if you could look at that, that might help a little bit as well, because sending a sketch up drawing of what space might look like will absolutely accept something like that or images placed in a in a temporary space so you can kind of give us an idea of how an, an installation might look or even use photoshop just with a you know a, a canvas put images on the how you would sort of curate them into a a layout that's great as well lovely thank you very much let someone else ask a question now cheers yeah. Thank you. I'm still only on two. Uh, in the chat, yeah. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> we'll go home early just looking at my watch. No, we're, we're here for um, a little while longer, but that's really, um, really interesting question there, Jeremy. Thanks very much for that. Yeah, I think another good uh, piece of free software you can use is Art Steps. I know I've used that previously. It's similar to a SketchUp vibe. Um, so that's also good if you're not getting on with SketchUp. Um, I think having a plan that you submit, because Picta does allow yeah. for, for all that. Um, and it's not something we've had too many of, I think, just yet. Everybody's done quite good. You, know, you can just do a thorough description and that's what we've received most of so far, I think, looking through. But mm -hmm. any actual plans is obviously very helpful as well. Um, so we've got some questions. They're coming in thick and fast. Now. Um, Ruby says, I love formats, innovative use of meanwhile spaces. I wondered if you could say a little bit more about the types of spaces we had in mind, shop fronts, industrial, outdoors. <clears throat> it might be tricky at this early stage. I will say we haven't got anything quite nailed down yet. Well, um, we, we actually, ha ha ha. Okay. Um, you, you're right to a point, <laughs> Jenna's right to a point, because we're still in a, in a, Planning stage. planning planning stage but i can give you some ideas of things where we've spoken to partners in the city that might fire um some interest in people here today i also need to give the sort of uh, what's the word i'm thinking of the the label the warning that these spaces might not eventually become part of format um, and this might not necessarily apply to those selected for the open call because what we're looking to ensure we do, and we will do this for those selected from the open call for exhibition, is it's got to be quite a muscular, prominent space in which we're going to show that work. So they're going to be quite curated, quite expansive exhibitions. Um, it might be two or three artists together, but it'd be almost, you could consider it three separate um, exhibitions in one place. What we'll do is we'll We'll build walls and spaces to make them into what sort of connecting solo shows, if that makes sense. So we have, of course, all being well, Quad, um, which we're sitting in today, which has a large gallery space downstairs. We have a, a really prominent artist already in mind. Um, and this is not from the open call. This is from our sort of development process for our gallery one. And then our gallery two is quite a, a large space. And we may well look to uh, place one or two of the open call artists in our gallery two space, which is our main gallery here at Quad. Um, I mentioned earlier that we're working um, and hoping to continue our partnership with our amazing partners, Derby Museums, and perhaps the Museum of Making, which is an old building. It's the old silk mill, apparently, um, uh, particularly the basement area is one of the oldest uh, factories in the world, but they've transformed it into this amazing museum about making in derby but last format at the top floor the attic space we showed work by brand new work by oliver frank channering called the perfect sentence 
really large exhibition, quite, I mean, oh, about 100 f- photographic works in there at the very least. And it's quite low ceiling, but it's got beautiful walls, really nice floor. We can build walls and spaces in there with our partners if, if that sort of works out. Another really interesting example is I, I um, spoke with um, an amazing individual um, who runs a space called Electric Daisy here in Derby. And Electric Daisy is a new a new uh, venture that's been here maybe about a year. And it's it's kind of a an environmentally themed outdoor space, meeting place, sort of hangout. Um, and we may well look to find works that we can put into that space. So it's sort of around electric daisy and a kind of outdoor works we're also uh, talking with our partners jack arts to once again produce um, works on outdoor pillars or outdoor displays there may well be some building work near to quad coming up soon where there's going to be large prominent really well made hopefully hoardings i know hoardings are maybe not the best thing but we may well look to put pop-up work on there for example but we're also talking with a new build, a new venue in Derby called the Beckett Well Space, where we may well put work in there, which we're thinking um, uh, uh, a specific project at this time. But we're also hoping to continue to work with our wonderful partners, Data, um, the dance focused organization, but also put on visual art exhibitions. Um, small venue, Debrec, which is again another music venue, but we showed some open call works in there before. Uh, Banks Mill, maybe the University of Derby again. There's also um, a space called Riverlights, which we've used for format before, and it's an old restaurant. It's quite bur walls, sort of breeze, breeze, breeze block walls, but we usually build walls and, and structures in spaces like that to, to um, uh, create shows within. So we're, we're still having met with our um, sort of not necessarily partners, our advisors who advise us on spaces around um, Derby that are sort of come up for use, but we may well look to some prominent large shop spaces. As you know, the UK high street is sort of in a little bit of a flux at the moment, so a lot of meanwhile spaces are coming up that way. In terms of sort of architecturally sort of significant spaces, we were hoping the currently being renovated Victorian Market Hall, which I'm looking at as I sit in this room just across the way. That is opening in early 2025, and we were hoping to maybe use that. And we knew we could probably get a space there, and it's going to be beautifully refurbished inside, almost back to its original splendor. But we think it's not going to be ready until about April or May next year, which would be a bit too late. The festival is 13th of March to the 6th of April uh, next year. So... Hopefully that gives you a little flavour of some of the venues we're thinking about. But Jenna's absolutely right. At the moment, we're still building up to those spaces. Um, Albi Anthony says, for the proposal submission, what are the key elements that the proposal must include? Images, I want to use description of the concept behind the proposal. Yeah, so I mean, th- for me, this is going to be so damn obvious, but um, keep it, you know, um, easy to for us to sort of, how can I put this, how, easy for us to sort of compartmentalise to understand. Um, although I say that with a caveat, why not be during and complex? No, do, do what you want. Um, make it adventurous, make it a really, you know, we you know, make us work for it. There you go. There's nothing wrong with making us work because I like that. I like to really dig into and uncover all these amazing submissions that come in. And of course, we're going to be looking at them, shortlisting them. Our jury are going to be looking at them and advising us on all the proposals too. Um, I mean, when we get, um, proposals through in the past or as used last year as an example i mean i we think and we're, you know of course we're quite biased but the picta platform i think lays things out really really quite well i mean what i would always say and i've always, i've been saying this to artists for 20 years what i like um probably because i happen to be autistic so i like <laughs> clarity straight away i like almost proposals like a press release so in other words you kind of give us a real punchy opening sentence or two about what you want to do, 
what you want to achieve, and then you expand on that that text, that description in the next preceding paragraphs going forward, and then you link it to the the images that that come in. We we if I should I should know this, shouldn't I? I'm picturing the 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 dashboard as we look at the images and the the text coming in for the open core. And usually images come in and they are tagged on, they have yeah, they yeah. have descriptions on them. So be as descriptive as possible. You know, use use your imagination or be as, you know, whatever way you want to do it, you know. Um, hopefully that's sort of answered that sort of element of your your question. Uh, but as I said, be be punchy, be to the point, give us a real strong opening gambit in your first sentence or two. Expand on that in your next, you know, preceding paragraphs. You know, give us some really clear instructions on how you'd want to, to to do that proposal. You know, give us length of walls, give us type of prints, give us the way in which you would framework a screen, VR headset, anything, you know, how we'd be plugged in, how we would look to work together, how the viewer would approach that space. Does that make sense? We'd like to... Yeah, I think, um, for me, I think it's probably, it's like an artistic symptom that actually you can get way to tunnel vision, like in your own work. And I think that's, you know, something that everybody can experience. But I think a way that I like to see work, I think I like to think of it as like, if you're too in it and you think, okay, well, this is really important to me, why should they see it? I think it's best to try and answer the question in the proposal of why the work is important to see now, why it's important in the context of what's happening. Um, and just try and think about it that way. Just why does it need to be seen in this festival specifically under this theme and why it needs to be seen now does help you kind of maybe re-broaden your thinking around it, but it will also make it quite clear as to how it applies to what we're looking for in the festival. Um, if that makes sense. Um, is there any way to look at any of the proposals from the past years? No, GDPR? I think it could be a bit of GDPR though. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but I'm just trying to think, um, is there any resources we can look at how something is put together? I think on, I have been um, interviewing past winners um, mm. recently. If you head to our Instagram, it, they do give, I think, quite a well descript. Um, some of them do go into quite a good detail about what they put in their proposals and why. Um, so that might be a good resource to go over to the Instagram and have a look through those videos um other than that i'm not sure what to direct people to no um it's a, it's a hard one to sort of um necessarily give an answer to because as i said we we i think we'd need permission from yeah. everyone who applied last time to share that 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 detail coming forward and i mean in the past not for format but for other projects I, i've asked permission from artists remove names and and um, we've been at sometimes I've been able to to pass something on, but that's not relevant in uh, in this case. Um, I think it'd be too too many people to ask in a way, really, unless we selected some. But I think I think often um, I mean I I fall foul, but you know, although I've, I've been a curator for twenty years, I, I, I was a, an artist over twenty years ago last time, and I um, and then I would agonise about how I would go about making a proposal or sending something in. And you often think, I mean, it's an autistic thing too. You're kind of picturing every um, occurrence you can think of, uh, uh, you know, in uh, that's ever existed. That's how I would go about it. I'm not saying necessarily um, you are. Who's who's that asked the question, is it? Uh, I'll, be. I'll be, sorry, I'll be. Um, but I would say this, just be true to yourself, be genuine to yourself about um, how you feel and the passion you feel about that work. Um, don't worry about us. You know, if you're, you're, you know, I, I would, I would recommend, you know, a real punchy opening, couple of sentences, really expand on your text and the great words that Jen has just said as well about how you approach things and just, you know, put that together, put it out there, and and the strength is going to be also in the strength of images as well for me, and the strength of the text. They go hand in hand, but I, I want to see all these great images that come through. Um, I want to be grabbed by those images. I want to be intrigued, you know, and I think B 
be confident in the power of your own work. Trust me, we'll 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 get it. You know, um, and I would I would just take that approach. Be confident in in you as an artist, as a practitioner. Not sure if that gives you tangible things to work to, Alvi, but um, maybe that will give you a bit of uh, the confidence to go forward. Hopefully. Um, yeah, I think... Hello, is that Mal? Hello. You have your mute, Mal. Sabes. Sabes. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Nice to see you both. Nice to see you. Uh, extending from what you were saying, um, I hear about the text, uh, hear about the strength of image. Um, we can uh, uh, say, I can. Uh, plan a presentation, the sizes, uh, uh, sequence, etc. But uh, is there room? Uh, uh, is there room to have a conversation with your curators to adjust what I suggest in my presentation? To adjust what you? Oh uh, yeah. So I I may I may. I may have a plan, mm. but uh, it may not suit the space that you have. Um, is there a is, is there room for negotiation? Can we well, suggest think, that in our proposal? Sure. I mean, it's a really again, it's a very pertinent, very interesting question. Thank you very much. I I think because of the the sheer volume of of practitioners that come to us, I think. Unfortunately, if we said to, to one person, we would have to offer it to everyone, which is wish we could do that. I really do. We haven't um we haven't got the capacity, unfortunately. But I will say this: don't be afraid to send in as an adventurous a proposal as you think. We're gonna go on the strength of yes, we've taken into consideration that potential setup that you have. But we're going to go on the strength of your work, your images, your text, your the way in which you posit that work. And then when we find you know that work to be intriguing and of interest, trust me, in the past, we've had so many super ambitious proposals. We might not necessarily necessarily had the capacity to fill fulfill every element, but that's where then our roles as curators come into to play. We will speak with the artist and we will strain every sinew to ensure that that vision that the artist has is fulfilled as much as possible. So I would say it's not going to be a gigantic space that we will be able to offer artists, but it, it will be a, a good space in which to produce expansive work. Um, I know that isn't, isn't very specific, but I, what I'm trying to say is, is be adventurous, be 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 sort of brave, and then we will then work with each artist to ensure that we fulfil every project to the best of our ability and the artist's ability too. Does that does that help? At all? Yeah, thank you very much. No, you're very welcome. You. It's a really good thank question. You. Thank you. And yeah, we um, we are working to various timelines where we we need to do an open call to okay. get our artists in because once we go through. The process post uh, the end of August. It is an incredibly um, busy period of time as we start to go through each proposal because we spend days and weeks going through various stages and various um, ways of interacting with our jury and as with our the curatorial team here at Quad and then with the artists. So it is it is a very involved process. But within that, of course, that involved process we. We liaise with or the artist direct. Sometimes, sometimes it can be a case of as we are making a shortlist and as we are coming down from maybe quite a large number of artists to another shortlist, we may well contact artists on that list just to get a bit more information about a layout at that point. But I would say be adventurous, be be brave, do, do you know, produce something that you think is going to really put your work in its most sort of you know, eye-catching and engaging light, and then we will work with you going forwards on that. Thank you. Thanks. No problem. Thank you very much. Have you got any more? 
Uh, no, someone was just after the um, apps for the exhibition mock-up, so I put them in there. Um, mm -hmm. But no mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. questions at the minute. Has anybody got anything else they would like to ask? Are we looking at Twitter as well? Is anyone sending something in that way? Uh, well, we didn't have any questions online before we started, but... Now everyone's coming through um, live and in person, aren't they? That's good. It's nice, though, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good. Um, so I'm just trying to think. I mean, there's some absolutely superb um, questions that have come out already. I'm just trying to think how else would I go about sort of saying to to someone who's considering making a submission to, to sort of um, look to, to do the best sort of proposal that they, they can do. Um, I mean, we have very specific guidelines on the website in terms of word counts, what we ask for. Um, generally, what I would do, what I would, I would always mentor artists to say is, you know, send what what they ask for, and that could be any sort of you know organisation that's looking for submissions via an open call. Um, but if you have any questions going forward after this point, do not hesitate to ask myself or my team. We'll get back to anyone as quickly as we can to try and answer those questions that they might have, um, you know, even after this session today. Um, I mean, whenever, whenever I should say as well, whenever we go through the um, pick the portal, when we start looking to um, uh, shortlist works and to go through lists again and again and to create shortlists and, and to, um, to, at times, I argue amongst ourselves as well because we want to advocate for specific artists, um, and we always generally agree. In the end, we do see everyone sort of in the same way. I should say that as well. So you know, present your work in its best light. You know, if you are putting work into a, a temporary space, just you photographers. I don't even need to tell you, do I? <laughs> you're uh, you'll do you'll you'll present it beautifully. I'm sure, but. You know, light it as well as you can with whatever um, things you have to hand or, you know, carefully think about that selection of works and maybe the order, because I think they are able to put them in a specific order on Picta. I mean, the other thing I would suggest as well, and many of you will have thought of this already, but as the, uh, as is it Sabiz? I think it's just Sabiz, yeah. Sabiz, Sabiz asking us just a moment ago about giving feedback. Well, you know, can you find, can you find someone who you trust to look at a proposal before you you submit it. I mean, I remember when I, um, way back, and this is in 1998 uh, time period, and I was applying to study in America, and I had, actually in those days, it was old-fashioned slides, and I went back to my old foundation course tutor, and I showed him all my slides and my work, and he took out one work, and that was my favourite piece, and he said, it just doesn't fit with the rest of your work, that rest of that submission. So is there someone that you, if you haven't done this already, do you trust to, or someone you you respect greatly to go along and say, hey, this is my selection of 10 images or what have you. This is my text. What do you think? You know, that might be a really nice way to give yourself a little bit more sort of reassurance and feedback. Um, that's something I would certainly do. Yeah, even if it's not, somebody with um an interest in arts at all is sometimes really helpful i know when i've previously made projects or made my own work uh even just showing things you know to my family my mum in particular like i can just give her work and you know if it think about the audience that's going to see it it's not just us you know if you are selected in into the festival just a general public audience will be seeing it so it's good to just sometimes get a sense check on I think it's, you know, good having the context and as working within this sector, you know, we kind of get it a bit more, but maybe even just just family and friends. And if it makes sense to the wider general public, that's always a really good sign. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. So more questions <laughs> as I frantically scan my brain for uh, more, more sort of uh, tidbits of information I could maybe... Uh, we can maybe give out um well feedback i've had from um like the juror member that i've done an interview with he said um you know even if your work isn't selected into this festival 
your work is still being seen by a team of experts yeah. and um yeah. jean christophe gooday is that you pronounce his name gooday, yeah. Gooday, yeah. Yeah. yeah um you know he said himself and you can watch the video on instagram if you like that um he's found work in other submissions of other festivals it hasn't then ended up in the original submission but he has took it into his own festival uh glass festival you know in france so there is always that opportunity and don't be too disheartened if you aren't selected your work is still being seen by you know a panel of experts so just try and have confidence in that i think yeah absolutely i mean i can um also say for certain in many times past through open calls i've really sort of latched on to a work or works and my fellow judges have not agreed with me and then i've kept that work to the side and then i i curated projects film works uh into group shows or solo exhibitions um going forwards um i've done that many times in the past i'm always very maybe i shouldn't say the name of this artist but in my previous gallery we did a collaboration with the photographers gallery we did a um, an open call we suggested um, we asked curators around the UK to, to uh, suggest artists for the uh, the commission opportunity and then it's one artist who'd actually submitted work to a, another open call I'd been I'd put together and I really like this work so I put him forward for the um, for this opportunity with Artsway in the photographers gallery he came to interview was absolutely fantastic we, we awarded him the commission, the fees, a solo exhibition at Artsway, a solo exhibition at the Photographer's Gallery. Then we took him to the Venice Biennale where his work was on display um, during the Biennale. I think it was 2009, that was. And then I asked him afterwards, you know, I knew of his work beforehand, great work. And I said, why did you apply to my, my little open call at the time? And he said, oh, my wife said it might be worth a shot. <laughs> so, you know, it's sometimes you just, you just never know where you're going to, what's going to what the outcome is going to be you know and then many times you know i we 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 select we find we work with artists and other curators in many different ways you know we get recommendations or partnerships bubble up or we go out out and about mostly and see work that we like or we get work through open calls and jen is absolutely right we it may not be successful but it will be seen by a really high level jury and also you know, I'm very biased, but but my amazing team here and myself as well, we'll see. It. And things lodge in people's brains, you know, and, you know, then next minute you you get some opportunity comes up in the future. Is that something coming up? It is from Victoria and they say, can submissions be edited before the submission deadline? I... Do you mean, Victoria, do you mean if you submit like it... Like we've already submitted yeah. it afterwards. Then you want to yeah. submit Yep. I mean, some systems, they allow you to, um, I, I can't remember whether you have like a portal uh, for people who submitted where you can just go and amend it before the deadline or not. I don't uh, think so, but uh, so I'll ask. I'm not aware of that on the picture platform. We could look I'm into that for sure. you. I'm not sure. I mean, I would suggest that you've got to the 31st of August. Um if you want to drop the program team email, I can find out and let you know. <laughs> uh, I'll just uh, put it in here for you. Thank you very much. Uh, is it just that? Program inquiries, I think. I think, let me just check. Thank you, my computer. Is it? So, but this, we're just looking up uh, email um, things. Oh. So someone wanted to get him. Uh, I was being recorded. Sorry, I'm wittering, I'm talking to myself. Program. Yeah. Let me just take it now. <laughs> hold on, hold on, I've got an idea. I, I'm fumbling around as I'm trying to... Um, figure out what our actual email address is this is one of our many email addresses it's it's program at derbyquad.co.uk yeah so if you send that Thank to you. us Victoria, we'll come back to you as soon as we can yeah i i would err on the side of once it's submitted i don't think you can edit it again but i will double check and find out for you thank you
<clears throat> Great. Thank you for that. Excellent, excellent questions. We do have about 10 minutes left. Um, does anybody have any further questions? Mm. No more. So we quickly type in a word. Yeah. So, um, where do we want to go now? I mean, when you you are selected for the open call, as I said, me and my team will then be working individually with with each selected artist to develop that project for exhibition. We will have a bursary for travel to bring an accommodation to bring someone uh those artists to format um we're still planning a conference and launch events and a portfolio review um and a catalog and a, a festival guide and a question has come in oh no thank you for session i think it's a session thank you um so there's we'd hope that there's quite an attractive package to to go for we wish we could take everyone um with us and one thing i'm maybe contemplating is it's not great but we've done this before but perhaps and this is going to do my team's head in but we maybe select one or two images from everyone who's applied and we maybe create a slideshow where works are on display during the festival as well from most everyone who's submitted to the open call so you're by extension part of the festival in some way so we can shout about that great work that's being made around the world today and how it's um, a applied in many different ways to the festival theme. Um, we need to sort of look into that because it might take a while to uh, put together uh, maybe a couple, a couple of thousand images. Um, and I can almost hear my my team sort of um, screaming. screaming exactly. like, I would do it. I've done it before. I, I only did it for a, when we, we did another open call called Future Focus. And we had about 40 artists. Uh, it did take quite a while, but maybe after... Uh, a length of time we can do that and we've got like a, a built-in large screen we do such things on that's in the near the main gallery space here at quad um uh so yeah there's this we're looking for I, i'm always looking for ways to 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 give artists even a small amount or a large amount or as much as we can in terms of support because well it's crucial that it's a it's a symbiotic relationship between artist curator and and a, and a festival like format, you know, we we want the very best work that's out there today, and you know, we we feel that everyone who makes work is a is an incredibly talented and and enthusiastic and passionate practitioner. So, you know, um, you know, go for it. You know, I hope hope everyone who's here today is is planning on on submitting something. Uh, you're considering it. It'd be wonderful to see your work and to be able to. To discuss it with me and my team and trust me we 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 do we it can take weeks as i said to to go through things we spend a lot of time going through those those proposals through that work reading texts um looking at images thinking about how that fits together as a as a as an exhibition as a as a festival as part of a festival going forward so um i just want to try and constantly reinforce the fact that it's a it's quite a process for us, but it's a process that is incredibly important and and a, and a very exciting one to be part of as well. Any more sort of any anything you can think of in terms of a of a really um, sort of bit of, of of a golden nugget of advice put you on the spot. Um, I'm not sure if it is advice. Um, <clears throat> And I guess I didn't like exhibit like through the open call. What I will say is like, I've, I've been in this job for like two months, but I have previously exhibited in format. And I think it is very encouraging or hopefully encourages others. There is a very supportive process. Um, you know, they do remember you and whether you get selected or not, um, it's really important that your work is seen. And if you are selected, then the system that's in place is incredibly supportive um and is a lot of fun actually um so that's just that's just nice and the close relationship that you can build as part of this festival um is really important so I would just recommend if you're on the fence and it's like a 50 50 you know you're not sure I just honestly would suggest just go for it um 
because you're not losing anything if, you, anything if you're not um you know uh, in terms of advice well one thing to say and i'm sure some of you maybe all of you here might might already be subscribed to the format newsletter or to our instagram page i would if you if you're not or even if you are head over there because as jenna mentioned a moment ago for example we've got some videos from previous prize winners on there who speak so well so eloquently about what it meant to them how they went about it, they give tips as well. Um, and you can find all these videos sort of um, either through the newsletter or we've got them all on Instagram, haven't yep. we? Yeah, good. And, and more to come. And more to come. Um, there might even be one by me where I try and make sense for once. <laughs> but there's also Jean Christophe's, um, Jean Christophe Godet's um, video. And Jean Christophe is the director of uh, Guernsey Photo Festival in Glass. And he does reviews all around the world. And he's an incredibly um, knowledgeable and well-regarded, world-renowned curator and festival director in his own right. So I would urge you to, to look at that as well. It's some really good advice. And that's advice whether you apply or not, actually, you know. So we want to we wanna create resources for artists as we go along as well to, to give more sort of suggestions and advice on, on how you go about, you know, putting a proposal in. And, one thing is, is that we, we're aware that this is, in essence, perhaps a competitive process, but we also want to be as wide ranging and inclusive as possible and to give as many opportunities as we possibly can uh, as well. So um, by that way, through the open call, we get a chance to see so many works and and, um, uh, and great pra practice that's been made around the world. I think that is reflected in the plant panel as well. So if you want to go to the format website, it does let you know who all the jury are. Um, and, you know, it's not just photography practitioners, it's um, festival directors, it's writers, it's people from all, you know, genres and sectors. So uh, if you're a bit concerned that, you know, you're not strictly a photographer or you work in a very specific field, like the panel of experts that will be looking at your work do come from numerous exciting fields so just be reassured that you know, someone will resonate with it i'm sure uh, yeah Ooh, so we're all two minutes left yes right. any last minute emergencies <laughs> um and there is that program inquiries email that jen is just Sure. Yeah, it's in the chat. If anybody uh, has any further questions afterwards, do feel free to email us. Um, and I get that email as well. So if any of my team aren't able to answer, then then I can always pick up things too, and I was happy to give as much feedback uh, as I as I possibly can. And and I assure you that I know my team will, and I will respond to everyone's query as quickly as we can. So well, thank you, yeah. thank you, Jenna, for setting this up and. Hopefully, Jody might watch this afterwards, and we very much missed her today. But I'm very glad I could step in. Um, yes, we thank may, you very uh, much. <laughs> no, no, and you know, we may well, we may well maybe look to do another at some point. Um, but thank you all for being on this call today. Um, you know, tell your friends, um, keep in touch. Um, we're really grateful for your um, uh, interest in format. You know, and um, good luck if you decide to make an application. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.